So in medieval Europe, there was an enormous demand for um, elite products, including walrus ivory that was used to make valuable objects in the church for royalty, for leaders. And the Vikings played a really important role in obtaining and trading ivory. And this drove their expansion and exploration into the North Atlantic to Iceland and then to Greenland, uh, where they were looking for new sources of walrus ivory. So the genetic sourcing has been really, really important because what it's demonstrating is a lot of the walrus ivory that the Norse were exporting back to Europe came from really remote places in the high Arctic. And experimental work on Norse seafaring uh, by Greer Jarrett at uh, Lund University has demonstrated that it was possible for the Norse to undertake these long distance hunting expeditions with their own boats it was very risky, it was very, very dangerous, but they were able to do this and to make these voyages, which is another important part of the research. And of course, what's really exciting is that we know that Arctic indigenous people, the Tula Inuit, were also in the same areas targeting the same marine mammals. So what we're talking about is the first full circle connections between different branches of humanity and the early stages of Arctic globalization taking place in the high Arctic, in Greenland and in, in Canada.